Okie dokie, folks. Oh, if I really wanted to be cheesy, I could say okie dokie, folky, but I'll never do that because that'd be too stupid. Welcome uh, to something I have only done once before, but the first time was a disaster because one of the players disconnected. We have a 2v2 ranked low elo game. That's right, their team game elo averages out to about 800 for each team, and it is on the map Hamburger. This is the lowest ranked team game happening across the world right now, okay? So it's pretty low. And Mona, if you dock before a lumber camp, Mona, you have a scout for that. Mona, okay, Mona, I, I think can't find the scout right now. <laughs> now, hey, very good scouting from Mona with the villager. Let's get the introductions in on the other side first, though. We've got Chaz A. Murphy playing as the Vikings, teamed up with Kalisario playing as the Chinese. Um, in the red... We have Bomb Wallen 007 playing as the Aztecs. And then in the purple, we have Mona. And Mona, I was correct, is actually going to dock uh, without a lumber camp. I'll talk about why that could be a concern. And finally, Mona is moving around with the scout. Now, a little bit of perspective here, okay? So, generally, if you have a team game elo, it is going to be... Three to 500 ELO higher than your 1v1 ELO. So I don't want to scare any of you team game only players out there. Because I don't necessarily think that translates down to the very bottom. But that's normally what I'm seeing with like your average players. Um, but I did look. And two out of these four players have played ranked 1v1s. And I didn't look at how many games they have. So that that's something I should have taken into consideration. But uh, two out of these four players are around 700 ELO in 1v1s. So that's not too bad. Mona brings in a boar. But okay, let's get let's talk about the map. So you have this wood line in the middle, and this is I guess like the meat of the burger, I guess. Um, and this is the full focus on hamburger because if you want to take wood anywhere beyond your straggler trees, you are sharing the wood line with the enemy. Okay. So a common strategy on this map, if you guys want to you know favor this map and surprise people who have no clue what's coming. You want to place a palisade wall on either side, okay? The wall here, and then have your teammate wall here. And then rush to Feudal Age and start tower rushing because towers will always range the other side of the wood line. And you could essentially force them off the middle wood entirely. And if you want to get real crazy to give you even more strategies to use on people, you can go towers and then you go for water, right? So you, you have docks. And then you go for navy. And so if they can't leave and they can't take wood in the middle, they're essentially dead. Red seems to have an idea of what's up here, though. Red seems to be doing a great job. Um, Red also had a villager. Oh, wait a second. Oh, <laughs> whoa, wait a second. I Red clicked over here, I guess, and forgot about it. And now can't build there. And green just noticed this, but green doesn't have loom. So red will actually win this fight. We do have more villagers on the way, though. They're not happy. That's their best friend. They're like, no, not Angela. So they're upset. They're angry now. And the scout's angry, too. And okay, so I guess it's going to be a, a trade of vil kills. Obviously, these two villagers, they, they want the final kill, you know. They want their revenge, but they're slow. And they should probably just head back to the wood line. But yeah, Red tried to go for crazy walls. Not even one palisade. Tried to go for the whole line there. Never seen that before. Red does need to make sure to run over here and wall it up, though. Now, purple kind of went reverse order from what I would suggest. Uh, what would be best, so you can actually afford fishing ships, is to place the lumber camp around the time that Red did. And you'll notice Red's wood count is high, right? Then you can dock. And then you can make fishing ships. And that's really good for your economy. Of course, players of this elo oftentimes overlook the importance of fish. So, you know, we do have a dock for green. Green's still placing a wood, uh, a wood, sorry, a mill, which is 100 wood, which lays a fishing ship. Just things like that are expected at this elo. But yeah, I mean, the wood is the focus. It is very important. And they are all sharing that single wood line. So I guess the idea was, I don't know if the devs were hungry when they made this map. This isn't actually an original DE map. This is a very old map. If anything, it kind of, when I zoom out, Looks like a very weird Pac-Man situation because you've got like the got the little mouth. I don't know. Um, 
but yeah, so I guess this is supposed to be the meat and the hamburger. Um, if you look at the the ratios, though, this would not be a hamburger that I would like to eat <laughs> because there is very little uh, burger and a whole lot of bun out there. But I've only done this map for community games. And again, we did try to cast this last week. I've been trying to mix in team games more because there's different maps and it's cool to see what low elo do in team games. Mona on the way up, by the way. Mona about to take this boar. But yeah, uh, it didn't work out last week because one of the players dropped. All right, good job from Mona. Mona will take the boar, no problem. Congratulations. Mona has walled this. Red has not walled this. And Red has forgotten. Red, hey. Hey, okay, Red's... Hey, Red's making a fishing ship, guys. Red was making a fishing ship. Uh, saves the vill. So, good job. I mean, multitasking is very hard. Yeah, I sit here and I'm like, guys, make fishing ships. But then you have to add one more thing to the list of things to do. And it gets, it gets tough. But well played from green to add fish. Well played from red to add fish. Blue to add fish. Mona didn't do that. Okay, Mona did it now. Um, and Mona is now adding a blacksmith as well. I have no clue what the plan is here. We have four players with four docks, though, so I assume Navy would be good. And Green is making a transport ship. Ooh. Transport ship. And Green is still in Dark Age, by the way. Hasn't even clicked up to Feudal Age yet. I guess that's a strategy, too. I mean, the higher your elo goes, the less that's probably going to be effective because they might have some navy out. But red also hasn't clicked up to the next age yet. And, ooh, we have team communication. Blue says, all good, question mark? Yes, yes, says green. Oh, I like it. You guys know how much I like chat. I spent two years whining for spec chat, and we got it content is just elevated ever since all right yes yes i don't know if the first yes cancels out the second yes and that means no i don't know if there's some special code here but i kind of doubt it this is just the scout for blue right now blue's about to hit feudal age blue with one dock blue is vikings has cheap docks doesn't look interested in making more it's making a barracks though um, we're not seeing any towers yet on the wood. We have a market here from Mona. I guess Mona's trying to go fast castle, basically. Um, and Mona wants to make another lumber camp way over here. This guy's just done with sharing. He wants a lumber camp all to his own. And aha! So I was wondering what Green would do. I thought maybe Green would transport over here, but I got too excited. Green is actually just trying to expand. And so the meaning of hamburger for these players is very different, but they seem to recognize that they're all kind of stuck here and very migration-like they need to leave. T90, which day of the week do you tend to get the most viewers? Uh, it depends. It depends. Depends on, you know, what's going on. Like, there are a lot of factors, right? So if, like, there's a tournament, I'll tend to get more viewers, I guess. But... Also, you know, if there's a tournament and there's some conflict with something else people might want to watch or do in life. I, I don't know. I uh, This point will range from, like, Lel and community tends to be pretty much the same. Tournaments just depends on what tournament's going on, how many new people are showing up. It's always real tricky, though, because what you guys see is always way different than what we have. There's normally about a 200 uh, viewer difference because it doesn't track... Uh, people who are not logged in. Or I, I, actually, I haven't actually figured it out, but people who either aren't logged in uh, or people who aren't on, on an account of some sort. So we've got about 600 here right now. Crazy fishing from Red. And that's a big difference on this map. Red's resources, good enough to go up to Castlage due to that. It's interesting, though, because Red didn't actually wall here. The so green at any point could delete a Palisade wall and run in with army. Okay, you can tell what Mona wants to do. And Mona really wants to go up to the next stage, and now Mona has also added a transport. 
are you watching the Stanley Cup? Who's your favorite? Who's your team? Yeah, we are watching. Uh, we're we're a Tampa house. I got we lived in Tampa, and I got my girlfriend into hockey, and it was the year before they won their first cup in this in this streak. And so obviously it was very easy for her to get into hockey when her team's freaking awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a, I'm a Caps first, Tampa second uh, fan, and we're we're rooting for Tampa. But I really like Colorado, so. Hmm. So now transport for red. So we have seen three players with transports. Blue's approach is actually very different. And Blue's approach could be successful, like we said. Making Navy here can be so strong. Blue also has added an archer range. Again, if you control the water, you kill their fish, you can range their buildings, but you stop them from transporting. But I guess the key is that purple and green actually have a villager on the outer ring. So if they can't leave, it looks like it'll be more vills for green now too. They can always build TCs up over here. I'm a Rangers fan. Thought we had a chance last round after the first two games, but you guys turned it up a notch. Yeah, Tampa, Tampa's Tampa, man. Too much experience. But the Rangers, the Rangers, uh, they've got a young squad, so they'll be good. Unlike my caps, everyone's old. It will be rough for a while, I think. <laughs> I don't like showing up with only two galleys at this time, but I still do like the idea. This will alert Purple, though, that something needs to be done about this. And I think Purple has actually been the player who struggled the most so far in this game. But actually, I didn't realize Purple's on the way to Cast Lake, so I take that back. The fishing ships will go down. And now, see, see how purple reacts? This is why I would say, you know, maybe wait. If you're going to be in cast lead soon anyways, maybe wait on that. You show up with six ships, it's hard for them to catch up. But if you show up with two, maybe purple could do something. But highly suggest purple makes fire galleys, though. Because one fire galley can take out two galleys if blue's not microing. More transporting here from green. There we go. Red made it to Castle Age. Does have villagers out here. Maybe waiting for the uh, resources to get a TC. But also has added a TC here. So that's not bad. Guys, they are so close to chopping through to each other, though. And green has noticed this. So green is dropping a tower here. And red can't actually do that because red has made the town center. And so this will freak red out a little bit, I think. Red might not really... Handled this too well. Towers and castles just affect low elo players so much. It's so stressful. But yeah, I mean, what you could just make another lumber camp over here. To me, blue and green have done a better job realizing how the map should be played. But they are struggling a bit more in the execution. Uh, like blue, for example, <clears throat> you know... Could have fully dominated water already. But wasn't quite, you know, didn't commit quite enough to it, I guess. Blue's resources are just insane. But then again, I, I have to take that back, actually. Because red red fish boomed more than anyone. Which is a sign that red knows more than, than some of the others. Red did also transport to the outer ring. Red also has made a bit of navy. Purple transported to the other ring. So yeah, blue is blue is a player who has a lot of score right now, but it's because of the resources. I think blue is going to need to push the middle. Uh, yeah, Joe, someone just linked the Discord for you there, okay? But great job from purple to make the fires. Like I said, fires are going to be very good in low numbers here. And I think Chaz is a little overwhelmed and a little scared, but we'll get villagers, villagers to the outer ring. And this has been a good game so far. <laughs> if someone towers in my base, I just spam whatever units I have against it and hope he doesn't have murder holes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I've seen that enough times. Yeah, basically you just you relocate your lumber camp here. And I think a really good addition would be siege. Make a siege workshop. Make some siege. And then, then you keep him off of wood as well. Right now, it looks like blue and green are waiting for the time that they chop through so they can attack in the middle. But red and purple want to control water. 
And man, this is this is a good force too. But blue is massing longboats. But massing is saying that blue is massing longboats is is not really accurate when there's only three of them. Compare when you're comparing fire ships and galleys, guys. Compare it like you would knights and archers. Okay. You you need a lot of archers for them to be successful when you get a lot of stuff to stop. And wow, look at this. So blue says, why are you still in feudal? And red actually says, sorry. But I don't know why red says, sorry. Because red didn't see that chat message. <laughs> I, I don't understand why red's saying sorry and why that happened at the exact same time. That's pretty wild. Yeah, okay. I mean, again, think of a fire ship as a knight. One fire, sh one knight against three archers, the knight's gonna win. It's not exactly how it works, but that's the best way I can, you know, simplify it for you guys. And I don't know, Blue. I mean, okay, it was a fair enough question to ask. I don't think Blue was necessarily trying to be come off as judgy, but Blue, I mean, you've got your own problems over here. You've made a lot of army that you can't really use just yet. You have, you you know, the opponent's probably chopping trees. And you could be ranging their villagers, and yet you're not. And I think blue is kind of giving up on water right now. And if I'm green and I have navy loop over from my ally's side, I would want a little bit more of a heads up. And, and here's green. Now, green with the fires will actually be okay here. So, again, unless you're going to fully commit, just make fire ships. That's, that's basically what my tip would be for you. Good job from green there. Okay, we have Fervor, and then a bunch of monks. Fervor, Sanctity, then a bunch of monks here for red. The Bomb Wallen team has a much bigger economy. Both purple and red are looking better in that regard. Purple actually with stables and ready to push. Purple had more fish. We didn't see blue make many fishing ships. Green also was only on four. He's red even... Uh, I guess he didn't redock, but he's just got so many resources. Just queued up for a game where this map came up. Ally said nah and just alt f forward. Ah, oh, dang. It's a good map. It's a good map. But the problem is, it's... You know, your ally might have been someone who doesn't fully understand it. And I think we're seeing a team who understands it more than the others right now. In this one. We see man at arms now for blue. Green is actually very close to chopping through here. I don't know if this is an intentional play from green, but it almost looks like it is. Green is getting crossbow. And if you chop through and run right into red's woodline, you're going to have a great time. Of course, he doesn't know that that's where red's woodline is. I, I think they need that. I think they need these archers to get through and do damage. Because right now, they are really not looking too good. So look at Red. Did Red scout something over here? Not really. Red just clicked the villagers to the other side. Yeah, Green's definitely waiting for this, guys. Green's very close to chopping through. Water is not fun and harsh for players in this game. Um, I think that's a matter of opinion, right? It's like, for me, I don't find Arena that fun. I will play Arena occasionally, but I can't play it a lot. I just, I just, it just doesn't work for me, but other people like Arena. I think what we should appreciate more is hybrid maps where you can do both, right? So I, I think that's why this map is quite nice, because you can do a mix of everything. Makes it very confusing, right? But I think it, it makes it a good map. So again, I think if it was higher elo, it might not be so good. Coinage! You guys know what coinage does, right? Because I'm not sure that purple knows what coinage does. Now, that's a bait. If I was a noob, and I knew, and I saw a coin, I would want resources. So I would click that and think, that's going to give me resources. That's not how it works, though. Coinage eliminates the tax when you send resources to an ally. So that would actually apply here. Maybe purple is interested in sending resources to red. But uh, not not too sure about that one. Blue also getting long swords. I mean, 
Maybe thinking Vikings, his civilization, very good with archers and infantry. And all green, don't don't run in there. Green, don't run in there. Green, run away. Bail. Leave green. Leave this place. They have chopped through, but red dropped a castle at the perfect time. We will also have a castle here for green. Okay, this is the problem. In fact, purple is 80 wood away from chopping through. And purple has knights, and purple will be in the Imperial Age. This is the problem area. Blue just protecting on water now. I think the players have no interest in pushing at all. We're all going to focus up the middle. It's just purple and red expanded their economies so much faster. You know what would have probably won green and blue the game? Because there's, there's something big here. That red did a really poor job of and you could even say that purple did a really poor job of and it's the walling aspect purple just had one palisade here never went to stone never added anything extra and blue had archers this whole time blue had archers right still blue has archers uh green had army green could have just deleted the palisade and ran army into red's base red just free boomed without needing any army for most of this time and hasn't been punished. Look at blue, though. Has added some scouts to scout the map. I like this. Just to see where everyone's at. Ooh, that's a bad sign for blue. So blue dropped a castle before Mona was in the Imperial Age. So a bit unlucky, right? Was probably hoping that Mona wasn't on the way up. But now that Mona's an imp, Mona could just shred this down. That's the first thing we see from purple. Mm, nothing. More villagers. Okay. No trebs. Uh, we got murder holes. Okay. Um, I, I would say get upgrades from the blacksmith. I would say get cavalier. I think those things would be the first on my mind. Green was very, 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 very late to Castle Age. And unfortunately, is also going to be very late to the Imperial Age. Red will be an imp soon. And red will... I have faith in red to make trebuchets. I don't think red will forget that. Red also making a castle here. Blue's... Uh, or sorry. Uh, Mona is finally going to make a treb. And yeah, this unfortunately seems pretty over at this point. I just don't think you can stop this many knights if you're blue. Even though they don't have full upgrades. I mean, blue just researched the cav armor. And he doesn't have any cav. Well, no, he does have knights, I guess. So he just do maybe doesn't know that viking knights aren't so good. Whoa! <laughs> uh, blue, maybe attack the villagers first? Because if purple garrisons this, purple will still be fine. Okay, interesting. Blue now getting murder holes. Castle will eventually go down, though. And purple looking for damage with the knights. Has not noticed this, though. So that TC will be lost. So could lose full control of the outer ring. Town bell's been rung. Crazy times for blue. Meanwhile, no trebuchet yet for red. A little surprising. Mm, but blue blue needs help. Green could send some help. Green has some army, but I don't know if it would ever be enough. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. The castle's going to stay up because the one and only trebuchet for purple is going to be shot down. And also, look at this. Blue is trying to desperately cut through to get the ram in there as well. Meanwhile, purple is trying to hit the other player. Uh, Chukunu do not have Bracer yet. So they're just Castle Age Chukunu. But I think like this is enough range units to kill these knights. It is definitely enough range units to kill these knights. If you pull back to the Castle Fire too, yeah, that'll help a lot. Wait, and purple made the same mistake with the next Treb. And is researching Hoardings, which gives more HP on castles, which is not necessarily bad. But if blue just focuses down that Treb... We have ourselves a game. Because the knights cleared everything. What is happening? 
Also, Jehu, I do see your messages, so we're good. What is happening here? And hoardings won't even complete, most likely. Oh, blue, click the castle, though. Don't worry about... This is crazy. Uh, what a great hold from blue, I guess. Hoardings might complete. But if it completes, is it good enough? And also, blue, I don't think you should chop through here. I think that is probably a big mistake. Hmm. So what's red doing? Red has had this whole time to make trebs. And red made a treb from over here. I don't know. I still... Green is just so far behind with the imp timing. I just don't see it. And blue's economy is also so bad. Purple lost how many vills? Like 15 vills. And there's a signal from purple. I think these two might be on voice chat. Because if you would signal and then not say anything in the game, you might be on voice chat. But as much as as much as this is like a bit of a throw from Mona and from Bomb Wallen, I, I still just don't know what the plan is here for the other players. Green is on the way to Imp, though. If he makes enough, if uh if Calisario makes enough two canoe and just commits to the upgrades, it's definitely possible. Obviously, having the castles is a gift from Red, though, because Red just refused to push it. Also, some walls here from Green. I like that. Is Blue still chopping these trees? Yes. Um, however, there's the calf. Uh, chopping this tree will not open that because there's more trees on this side. Now, this needs to be rewalled, though. Uh-oh. Well, there's... Okay, there's pikemen. So, they'll, they'll actually get some kills here, which is good. But losing all the trebs would obviously really hurt... Yeah, the, the trebs should most likely go down. Good job from purple. But look at how much Cav is dying. <laughs> I guess this comes down to will blue lose the castle. <laughs> this defense of the castle is pretty insane. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Blue could still hold on again. Comes green here to help. Is green going to hop inside the castle? Purple just continues to lose more trebs. But there's two trebs now instead of just one. I don't know why green's even over here. Green doesn't know where to go. Blue's going to lose the castle. Okay. I'm 950 elo. What should I play to get T90 to watch? Just, just do your thing. Don't worry about me. Tell how awkward this map is. Would have loved to have seen blue move the knights around a little bit more. But guys, blue and green actually have the lead in population. And it's all due to the military count. And the orbs! The orbs are ranging the treb! Ah! Guys, I haven't mentioned this in a long time. Purple can't take wood right now. Okay? So purple has a lot of food, but those farms are not going to reseed because of the lack of wood. And purple needs to, to recognize that and, okay, look, red just sent wood over to purple. So purple needs to, to somehow get TCs up there again. Or hop in red's transports or something. Now, I would like to see green make trebs. And green is actually doing this. No way! Green is making trebs! And red had all this time to do that, right? And red's, red's now going to go for jaguar warriors. And is, is helping out and is repairing Purple's castle, of all things. Meanwhile, Purple is getting Paladin. So you had one team get to Imp much faster and just fail to push with the with their position. And the resources have been there. The resources were there for Purple. It's starting to drop off a little bit. But I love how Green, the moment they entered the Imperial Age, or Green entered the Imperial Age, said, Let's go. However, did not upgrade the two canoe any further. So, you know, it's a low elo team game. It's been very intense action. Red's getting Onager too, so I'm curious to see how that develops. Because I, I'm uncertain on if Green's going to have the micro to be able to m take down Siege. Well, Green is has clicked the houses. Okay, there we go. Good stuff from Green. Chemistry now for Blue. 
Now, blue is adding a town center out here. Very important moment in this game. Starting to expand the economy a little bit. Also has rams here. And purple notices this and is probably hearing about it from their buddy. Uh, and is going to have paladin, which is no joke, obviously. We have skirmishers from red. Again, not fully upgraded. So we... I think with this many skirms, it should be good because... We're looking at Castle Age 2 Canoeuvres, Castle Age Skirms, essentially. Um, oh, and now Onager's in as well, and Green needs to bail. Yeah, Green, you need to bail, unless you have good micro. Let's see it. Uh, yeah, I would say run away and hide. <laughs> oh, man, the Skirms are perfect. I didn't realize Red had so many of them. The Paladins from Purple are now here. And it's time for Bo Wallen and Mona to bounce back here. Uh, the elite Jaguar Warriors will take out the Trebs. The Skirms can take care of everything else. We have long swords for green. Yikes. Well, I mean, going champion against Skirm is something you'd want to do. Zero upgrades is not great, though. I would have preferred to see green max out on the upgrades for the units that green invested into here. Because the Chukunu, since Red hasn't gone for max out upgrades, the Chukunu would actually be able to take care of the Skirms if Imp upgrades are in. I know all that some of you hear as I talk is this game is complicated, this game is complicated, this game is complicated, because there's so many specific little things, but that's just how it goes, right? Like, Imp versus Castle Age units, if you're, as far as upgrades, you're going to do pretty good regardless. But I doubt green checks. They probably don't check these things. They don't click it. You know, they don't look at the stats. But yeah, green needs to fall back. And blue needs to come into the game with land military. Blue is... He was... Blue is kind of living on a prayer for a while here uh, with the castle war. And maybe he just wants to revisit that strat here. But maybe for green, you just have to hold this position now. And maybe help your teammate out with Trebs to take out the castles. Purple did end up getting some villagers on wood in the north, which was an important thing. And yeah, Red's just going to start to build up more here. Great game. Uh, question one. Military buildings have a gather point. Is there a way to make the units go to the gather point on patrol stands by default? No, there's not. No, there's not. Good question, though. Chieftains now coming in. So, Chieftains, uh, as we have the Town Bell from Green. Chieftains means the Viking Infantry has additional bonus damage against Cav, which is obviously very relevant here with the Paladins out and about. Red seems to be the strongest player here. 108 Eco. Definitely has that rhythm of continuing to create Vils. Mona is doing a good job as well, though. It's weird. I feel like Mona and Baumwallen have played better. But they haven't won the game yet. We'll see if that ends up ever happening. Blue actually added a cannon galleon here, which was smart thinking. Hmm. I think purple could actually attack that because it's on the shoreline. But if they were to add enough navy, I mean, they could eventually just stop the... Stop the opponent from ever expanding. And look at all the things you could clear up. Oh, man. Green missing so many blacksmith upgrades, though. It's such a shame, too, because Chinese also have cheaper techs. So it's a bit of a waste. In theory. Purple going for more raids. Blue back inside the TCs. And red still creating vills. 110 eco now. Okay, here comes the pikes. And they've got chieftains. They do have full attack. That's not bad. The castle fire, TC fire, all that will obviously do a bit of damage here or there as well. But good raids from purple. Purple has the right idea. My concern for purple is lack of resources, though. Purple has tons of food, has wood now, but doesn't have gold, so can't make any more paladins. And if you can't make paladins and you're starting to lose your base, there's a chance you're going to get overwhelmed. This is going to put all the pressure on red. And that is a ton of Chukonu. They have chemistry now, so they're doing more damage. 
Guys, I think Red needs to win this game solo right now. I mean, Purple can make like have, but... Let's see if Red remembers Blacksmith upgrades. Because it's missing a lot of them as well. Oh, that's funny. Purple says, hey, heal me up, boys. Heal me up. Uh, blue still making some pikes. Getting supplies! Classic. I think if blue continues to push purple, red has to go help there. And if red has to go... <gasps> if red has to go help there, red can't necessarily do what's needed on this side. I think that's how this breaks down. And look at those champs go. These are skirms without bod canero. And champions with help. A single armor upgrade. So yeah, back up here now, green. Okay, now there's now there's some other units. Maybe you need to get out. Actually, look how look how fast the skirms are dying. Imagine if Bracer was in too, or Elite Chukunu, or Rocketry. This is crazy, guys. Blue though doesn't have the support of the of the siege. A pretty basic problem some low elo players can have. Loses the trebuchet. Sad times. But he's slowly moving around here. And when you have skirms killing champions like this, it's definitely a time to think, hmm, what's wrong here? What what is what is not what's going wrong for me? Why is this not working? And oh okay, so Green went to the siege workshop to make a manganel and completely forgot about the army here. And red is starting to really push push the uh engagement in now. Hmm. Green also has yeah, green also making galleons and also has fire galleys. But red has a lot of leftover ones. Again, I think it's really important that blue continues to push. Uh, and, and push successfully on this side. Because I do not see green surviving. Unless green remembers blacksmith upgrades on champions or anything. Now, jaguar warriors are fantastic against the champs. But, you know, red would have to make them, right? So it at least... Like, going to canoe champ could work really well. Purple's dying, though. Like, purple will continue to die here. Purple really needs to maybe think about getting a town center up on this gold or something. Let's go! Come on, blue! Look at green! I think green might have taken out red's trep with their own trebs, because look at this. Elite Chukunu being researched in the castle that is 59 HP. Why not? And the other castles research in Great Wall, which adds a bit more defensive power to the Chinese. What's happening? Low elo team games are crazy. Now, blue actually has armor upgrades on the champions. The blue's champs will actually be really good. And if blue continues to make them, I think they can do this, guys. It has been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There have been throws... And there has been throws of throws, and there has been lots of different talking points. But green has somehow held on this side. Blue has bounced back like a maniac. Purple's going to lose this town center. There's the only town center that purple has. And now red is over here. And since red is over here, green is having fun with this. Manganel doing a good job because Skirm's, well, missing some upgrades. Green will take care of this trebuchet. And suddenly, I'm worried about red. Purple rebuilds the town center here. Okay. The stubbornness is interesting. Because you know, you do have villagers out here, purple. <laughs> you still could make a town center out here. You don't have to worry about just this. Again, red is worried. But blue's shown up with only two trebs. And I think this castle will likely stay up for red. It's going to be really close. We have the Onager on the way. That's the key here. And actually, the Onager fired on the Trebs first. And now they go after the champions. And wait a second. Wait a second. The castle's going to go down. No way. And on the other side, green's massing units. The monks here could all go down. You now have purple fighting with villagers. Purple has no clue what to do here. As has been the case for a while. The Cannon Galleons! The Cannon Galleons are on the castle! And now Red sees this as well. So, you know, Red's just stressed. Red's like, I have to say purple. I have to push. I have to do this. I have to do that. And actually, Green has more than enough on this side, despite not even having upgraded fire ships. Who needs that? So Green can continue that push. Blue is also taking out the market. 
which had some trade here. And red trying to get more monk upgrades, I think just because the there's more HP for Aztec monks after the upgrades. But if that's what red is doing during this time, that tells you how bad things are going to be. Again, getting monk technologies when so many blacksmith upgrades are missing is the most low elo thing ever. And I don't think purple has any more fight left. I mean, all that food in the bank, maybe some ways to, to try and come back. Could have maybe made light cab, you know, done something, but purple kind of froze up a little bit. Maybe didn't want to continue to fight. You know, you put in so much effort in a game and then you have to rebuild everything. That can be stressful and just not worth it for some people. Look at the variety of units we're seeing from blue and green right now. What a great comeback from them. Here are the monks. That's all red has over here. I mean, red's got resources, but if red doesn't have castles, red can't make jaguar warriors. And that's what red was relying on the most. We now have redemption for red. There's a chance that maybe atonement was researched because, well, I don't know. Uh, maybe he thought, maybe he got him confused. Maybe he wanted redemption in the first place and he wants to convert siege. Mona just sent all resources over to red. So Mona's in the game, but Mona's like, nope, it's all you, have fun. And then here come the siege. So with redemption, red could actually convert all of this. And yeah, red wants to convert the trebs. <laughs> oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Can't make trebs because my castles have been destroyed. Let's just convert trebuchets. That's the way to do it. <laughs> oh no, don't kill this. It's about to be yours. Don't kill it. Okay, there you go. Blue's like, wait, what? Why am I losing my siege? This doesn't make any sense. Meanwhile, green's progressing through. But everything's happening for blue and green right now. I didn't think they had a win in, in them here. But I thought this was over. But turns out blue's knights earlier on that TC from purple were perfect. And then, you know, the 5 to 10 minutes where he was somehow keeping his castle up was enough. And then I think blacksmith upgrades played a huge part. Chieftains was hugely relevant, too, for some of the pikes. And now, boom! How do you like it, fool? Green says, hey, thanks for the idea. I think these things are cool. I should use these more frequently. Green shows up with onagers, and this is over. There's no way Red can save the island now. What Red could do is drag this game on for a while and try and do something out here. But that is, I, I do not think that Red will ever think that that is a possibility, especially when there's Navy too. I mean, Red would have to be borderline griefing at that point to continue to play past another five or so minutes. I'm impressed, man. I'm impressed with the fight that Blue and Green had here. I thought they were in big trouble. And I think it's just such an obvious example of not uh, having a plan while you go to the next stage. We had purple and we had red way faster to castle age. They had castles and they saw the opponent had castles and yet they lost all their castles or they didn't take any out in the travel world. That's just inexcusable with those resources. And it's so it's an easy thing to fix, right? I do actually think red and purple played this game much better overall. Uh, economically, they were fine and they just needed to know what to do in early game. Red is still making monks. So I guess once there's no more gold for monks, Red's going to have to call it. And yeah, Red calls it. Love the GG as well here. Low elo team game. You wouldn't necessarily expect to see it. We have the GG from Red. He, he resigns. And now Mona's still here. And then Mona taps out as well. GG, guys. Wow, well played. I hope these guys end up re-watching this one. This was crazy. My word. Okay, so let's sum this up. So green... Green loved army. I think green made more army than all the other players combined. Green just made tons of army. But for green, green lacked the economy. Um, you know, struggled to get resources for a while. Did eventually solve some of those problems. Excuse me. I think had a lot of idols as well. Obviously, at this stage, there's a lot more idols because they're only focusing on the army. But, I mean, being later to imp, I think, should have been the end of green. Red. Love the economy. 
and and love diverse unit choices too but never wanted to make trebuchets when it mattered um you, you sum this one up simply by just looking at their uptimes i mean this is bad guys this is not pr not a pretty one green at three castles green in, in in the imperial age at 47 minutes red in the imperial age at 38 minutes and had two castles only ended up making trebuchets once green was in the imperial age that's pretty bad um it didn't see a lot of pushing in early imperial age from red it was like a lot of waiting i think maybe red thought they had the game won because mona was also in a good spot on the other side um what hurt mona was the stubbornness to to not put any additional effort into the outer ring some players are like that mona's like i already transported villagers out there once i don't feel like doing it again it, it very much looked like a oh god i don't want to i don't want to do that so i'll just i'll just stay here also didn't want to uh, really fight on with any of the food, which I think could have helped, right? Would have obviously lost to Pikeman Champion, but I think making Lycav could have done something at least. Uh, but yeah, and then for Blue, I think Blue learned a lot of lessons in this game on commitment. Um, Blue had the idea of going Navy initially. Would have worked out really well, but Blue didn't really commit that much. Blue had five Pikemen and seven crossbows and Castle. Not only didn't move them out, didn't commit that much. But eventually, near the end, Blue started to solve those problems. Uh, still loves to sprinkle in different types of units. I mean, we've got 10 Berserks inside the castle. We've got some Arbalest mixed in. It's still small numbers, but what Blue did get was the Blacksmith upgrades. I feel like if we combined all four of these players, we would have a 1,000 ELO player. We have, we'd have our Blacksmith upgrades. We would have a lot of economy. We would have a diverse army composition. We would have a lot of numbers on our army. And geez, if you wanted to take it one step further, I mean, we'd have Trebs when it mattered. We would have Monk text if you if that was relevant. It was like four players who lacked different things, which is what made this game special for me. Also, 2v2 hamburger, not bad. You know what I think would be epic, though? I think what would be epic is... Um, you know, a game where someone was clearly pushing the mid, because here they, they all went in on the middle, and one team won, the other team just resigns. But there's plenty of opportunity for raiding on the outside. So, you know, like, let's say uh, red pushes green back a bit, and then blue is pushing purple, and then so it becomes a little bit of like a 1v1 between blue and red for a while and then green raids on the outer ring or something that would be really strong because i mean if purple just did that if purple just like cav raided i guess blue had a castle here but i think that would have been really successful because they have a lot of exposed villagers over here but yeah uh still a great game there's the kd for you i mean even this showed the amount of upgrades that green and blue had i actually would love to see this total statistics on resources there uh, obviously, resources were sent. Red's Red's going to be upset. <laughs> I mean, Red killed it. Red's going to look at this and say, hey, Mona, what were you doing? But in reality, I do think Red could have used this to win the game on his own. Jaguar, Warrior, Skirmisher, Onager, all that stuff's good. You just have to have your upgrades on the skirms initially and just keep pushing. Um, yeah, what was the research percentage? Where is that? Okay, you see this? Now, Franks typically have a low research count because they normally don't go for a lot of ranged units. They're kind of stuck on knights. But still, 29%. Red had 43%, which actually surprises me. But I guess a lot of that's probably monk technologies, which might not have been as relevant to the fights, whereas this was all relevant to the fights. Uh, castle technologies, uh, blacksmith technologies, even university technologies were all in there for Calisario. So yeah, uh, great game. I hope people enjoy this. Let me know if you want to see more team games. Uh, let's look at their profiles again. So this player is 750 in 1v1s. Just doesn't play a lot of 1v1s, so I don't know if that's accurate to today. Apparently two weeks ago played some games, so that's not too bad. Probably is. Uh, the other players here, Mona, doesn't play any 1v1s. So not a 1v1 player at all. Chaz... 689 in 1v1s. Seems pretty balanced after that many games. And then uh, Chaz was teamed up with Calisario again with no 1v1s. So 
pretty cool to see a mix of people who do play what we typically cast 1v1s. And then you have people who primarily play team games, maybe a little scared of the 1v1 pressure. 